Board members, we're back. The boardroom's open again. It's another faction focus video for Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea. You can see above, this is the Undead faction. So, kind of got the board laid out some of the pieces from all the different factions from the Order and Chaos expansion. We're going to uh, focus this time on the Undead. So, these are some of the Undead Towers. In that uh, expansion also are the Lizard Folk. There's also the Goblins and the um, Lion Kin. But this one, we're talking about all things undead. So, as we bring some of these out on the table, we've got the serfs. Uh, let's take a look at one of the serfs here. He's got a little bag over his shoulder. It's kind of hard to see. The, the undead are tough to see. They're um, just a plain white plastic. Maybe I can zoom in a little better on this. I guess that's a little better. So he's got a bag slung over his shoulder. And then the warriors are really easy to see. It's you just throw them on the table like that. Um, sword and shield, you know, really basic army uh, type of thing. So, get their citadel in play here. Or I call it the citadel. It's called the capital. I don't know why I call it the citadel. I think maybe it sounds more prestigious that way. Let's take a look at what you get when you field the undead army. The first thing, the first building you can build is a necropolis. What good would an undead army be without a necropolis? At level 1, your necropolis states when an army containing at least one of your warriors wins a battle, the enemy must also lose plus one strength worth of units. So when you win a fight, so let's put some people out here to fight with. I've got some lion kin and uh, maybe a couple of, well that's a good example I guess, two warriors. So we'll go down here and take a look. So. These two warriors come fight the Lionkin warrior and um, Surf. It's four point or four strength here, three strength here. So if they lose this fight, the enemy al must also lose one more strength worth of units um, somewhere else on the board. Basically, they they just lose another strength worth of units. It's not very fun to fight against the undead. It's never a good idea. It doesn't end well. Um, however. During a fight, when you have a level 2 capital building, if you lose a warrior in battle as the undead, you gain 2 mana, probably to be used to raise another warrior here shortly. And at level 3, that necropolis makes it so your armies are plus 1 strength for each warrior soul in the underworld. Now this is something very different that only the, und the undead player has access to. Uh, to a max of three. So you can only have a max of plus three in the underworld. And the underworld looks like that. It's a card that they get. One side says warrior souls. The other says surf souls. Max of six souls total. And on the other side it says uh, reap a soul. After destroying an enemy warrior or surf in battle, pay two times its natural strength in mana to place a soul token of that type onto the underworld card, a maximum of six. So you're going to put soul tokens on this underworld card, whether it's a uh, surf or a warrior, and they're going to stack up here. And your armies are plus one strength for each warrior soul on the underworld card if you have a level three necropolis. Now, to, once you have a necropolis, it allows you to recruit your lich. This is King Amdiak, and that's, uh, that's King Amdiak right there. And we're going to show you... What this guy is all about. King Amdiak led the revolt against their captors, the elves. The supernatural aura that surrounds him is strengthened by each soul trapped in the underworld, leaving grim fear in the hearts of those who stand against him. When he falls in battle, he is reborn to an empire even stronger, and when victorious, he and his troops are engorged with the flesh of their foes. So, this guy is uh, the undead king, as it were. At level 1, the, when the Lich attacks, the enemy must immediately move one Serf in the defending army to an adjacent region. Cannot result in a battle. So, um, got a guy here maybe, and a guy here maybe. So, the Lich, when he's attacked, so where's my Lich King? Haha, <laughs> Lich King. So, Lich King attacks maybe with this warrior. When this happens, the enemy must immediately move a Serf to an adjacent area, and it cannot start a battle. So he's going to have to flee like across the map maybe to here or something to that effect. That's level one. Level two, 
The Lich is plus one strength for every two souls in the Underworld. So since we talked about the Underworld, you kind of know what that means. And level three, you gain three victory points if the Lich is destroyed in a battle. So if you can somehow get him thrown into a fight and he dies, then you get three victory points. And then you got to summon him back again and uh, get him out there and get him to die again. So like, it, like the flavor text said, he comes back stronger every time. So you get more and more victory points the more he dies. The next battle, or the next building, is a crypt. After you have your necropolis and you summon all these undead, well, where do you house them? Well, it'd be a crypt. Why not? At level one, the crypt states, if you lose a surf in battle, gain one mana. Then at level two, if you lose a battle, you may immediately recruit one time, even if you've already taken the recruit action this round. So losing a battle in an undead faction isn't the worst thing in the world. If you consider all other factions so far that I've previewed, the humans, the dwarves, the elves, and the orcs, if they lose a fight, they lose a fight and bad things happen. In the undead case, I mean, the king, if he loses a fight, you get three victory points. Here, if you lose a surf in a fight, you gain a mana. And if you actually lose the fight itself with a level two crypt, you get to take a free recruit action. So it's not the worst thing in the world to give it a shot and fight with your undead army. And at level three, the crypt states each soul in the underworld at the end of the game is worth one victory point to a maximum of six. So when we talked about the or, or the uh, dwarves who get victory points for each mountainous region they control up to six, the elves get a victory point for each forest region they control up to six, the undead get a victory point for each soul on the underworld card that they have up to maximum six. So they really play off the underworld tokens a lot in this in this game. The third building is the Boneyard. Where do you get all these bones from? Well, it's, that's going to be the Boneyard. So with a level one Boneyard, when you destroy... Oh, I need to go back. I need to go back to the crypt because we got to talk about the Wraith. Who, who monitors this crypt? Well, that would be Ulricht. He's the Wraith. Um, this guy, after pouring over the manic scribblings of their elven creator, Ulrich's presence alone spoils the energy of his enemies and their land, sucking the magic from their very souls. His dreaded arrival is announced by the wilting of all greenery from the land of Ogmore. He harvests that which rots around him, leaving only black and decay in his wake. So that is the wraith. He's who you can summon when you have a crypt. At level one, it states that all regions adjacent to the wraith's region yield one less resource than normal, except when he's in the courtyard. So the courtyard is your player board, basically. And if he's here, not summoned to the board, then he doesn't provide that minus one resource. But when he's out, on, out and about, this guy's just nothing but trouble. So if he's hanging out here and the lion can are, well, that's a bad example. I need serfs here, surf, surf. The lion can are here minding their own business like so. This is a really bad situation for the lions. Here's why. This lion is trying to get one mana from the forest, one food from the field, and one ore from the mountain. Well, at level one, the wraith's ability states that all regions adjacent to his region yield one fewer resource than normal, so they'd be reaping none for that whole turn. That's not very fun for the enemy. Level two, that says, after losing a battle that did not include the wraith, you may immediately move the wraith to a region adjacent to that battle. So if we go back to this fight here where the king knocked out, the, told the serf he's got to leave, and they killed the warrior over here, and the wraith wasn't there, the wraith can then move to a, a region adjacent to the battle. That, however, cannot result in another battle. So you can't just keep triggering battles off of that ability. And level three, the wraith's ability is that all regions adjacent to the wraith's region will yield no resources. Um, to be completely honest... I don't know, I mean, it's a good ability. I just don't think it's a good ability for a level three ability. I see some of the other abilities on these other heroes. They're phenomenal in comparison to, he already kind of does that at level one. If he's adjacent to a, a region that only produces one resource anyway, it produces none ever. Because that's his level one ability. It just, it only affects if he's adjacent to regions that produce two. So I feel, okay, maybe... Maybe saying it's not good isn't the right way to say it. It's, it's not as good as others are. Uh, I just don't see it as useful, 
realistically. But that's the Wraith. Uh, starve your opponents of resources, and then he can teleport to regions adjacent to other fights that you've won. Now that's really good. Because if, if your opponents, or if you win a fight over here, let's say, you're fighting here, and you won that fight, and your opponents have, have some serfs over here gathering all kinds of crazy resources, and then you just say, okay, well, I won that fight. Boom, I'm now over here starving you of those resources. That's pretty good. I just don't think the level three stacks up as well, but that's what the Wraith does. All right, moving on. We're going back to the Boneyard. At level one, the Boneyard says, when you destroy an enemy serf or warrior in battle, you may reap a soul. So reaping a soul states, after destroying an enemy warrior or serf in battle, you can pay two times its strength in mana to place that soul token on this. So that's how you reap a soul. Um, so I, I didn't state that earlier. To be able to do this ability, you have to have the Boneyard in play. So that's kind of a distinction there. At level 2, for a recruit action, you may remove a soul token from the underworld and place a unit of that type from your supply in a region you control. So instead of paying the cost, which serfs are one food, warriors are two food, instead of paying those costs, maybe at that time you're out of food, but you still need some warriors or serfs on the board, you can raise them from the underworld by paying um, uh, uh, hold on a second for recruit action. Yeah, but just by paying the recruit action, you actually don't have to pay anything. You had to pay it to get the token on here, to be clear. But to remove it from here, you don't have to pay anything. So that's actually really, really good. If, if you're out of food and you're out of units, but you have souls on here, you can bring them right back for a recruit action. That's nice. And at level three, the Boneyard states when recruiting, pay one fewer resource for each surf soul in the underworld. Hoo-wee. Okay. Example time. If you had, let's just uh, put two of these here. Two surf souls. Right? This, I don't have the tokens out, but these, we'll just say these are them. Two Surf Souls. It says, when recruiting, pay one fewer resource for each Surf Soul in the Underworld. So you could actually recruit two Surfs for one food because it costs three food to recruit two Surfs in one, uh, in one turn. So that's a really good ability as long as you prime your Underworld with plenty of souls. All right. Now comes the uh, airships and sea ships. So first we have the Fairy of the Dead. Kind of a little. So let's take a look at that up close. There is the Fairy of the Dead. At the sea dock, it says the fairy collects one resource of your choice for every two souls in the underworld if in a sea region. So not against the shore, but if it's in the sea, which is kind of the dark blue area here, it will, recruit, it will collect one resource of your choice for every two souls in the underworld if it's in a sea region. If you lose a surf in battle with a level 2 fairy and there's room on the fairy, it may immediately be placed aboard instead of gaining the one mana. So that requires uh, the crypt to be built. If the crypt is not built, you must pay one mana to do this. So if you lose a surf in battle, one of these little guys, and there's room on the fairy, instead of actually losing him, he goes to the Fairy of the Dead. Super thematic. I love it. And level three, if you lose a warrior in battle and there's room on the fairy, it may be immediately placed uh, aboard instead of gaining the two mana, which you would gain for the Necropolis. Instead of gaining it, you could put him on board if there's room, like that. If the Necropolis is not built, you must then pay two mana to do that ability. So you can build it or not build it, depending. However, if you don't build it, you have to pay that two mana cost. So that's the Fairy of the Dead. Now the really fun one, the Dracolich. Let's take a look. This guy. That is the Dracolich. The Undead Dragon is their airship. Um, the level one Dracolich states, when recruited and built, the Dracolich can be placed in any land region you control. So it doesn't have to be built adjacent to your uh, capital building. So that's kind of nice. At level 2, enemy serfs are minus 1 strength when battling against the Dracolich to a maximum of minus 5. And at level 3, if the Dracolich is destroyed, all players, including those not even in this battle, must lose 1 serf from the game board. Wow, that's pretty phenomenal. If you're playing like a 3 and 4 player game and the Dracolich dies, even other armies that aren't involved in the fight lose a serf. 
that would paint a pretty big bullseye, I think, on the, on the back of the undead player for sure. Uh, one of the things I neglected to mention in the Boneyard was the Reaper. That is the guy you get to summon or recruit to the board. That's the hero from the Boneyard. The Reaper's name is Methusiel. And Methusiel is known to the people of Ogmore as the Harbinger of Death. By his sheer ire alone, he has harnessed the power to trade the souls of the living with those of the dead. With his deadly scythe and thirst for carnage, the undead ranks have grown rapidly, and the undead and the underworld swells to the brim with the damned souls of his enemies. This guy, at level one, if the Reaper wins a battle, reaping a soul costs only the unit's strength in mana. So when you reap a soul, remember, it normally costs uh, twice its na uh, natural strength in mana. With the Reaper, if he's in the fight, it only costs whatever their strength is, not twice. At level two, if the Reaper wins a battle and an enemy surf was destroyed, you may gain one surf from your supply in that region. So... If he goes and fights this, okay, Dracolich, you're in the way. If he goes and fights this serf and defeats him, not only does that happen, but he then gains, well, that's a, there we go. He gains a serf in that region. So basically he raises that thing that he defeated from the dead and makes him his own. And at level three, if the reaper wins a battle and an enemy warrior was destroyed, you may gain one warrior from your supply in that region. And it may stack with the level 2 ability. So if I killed a warrior and a serf in this fight, I would gain both a warrior and a serf, just like this in that region. I would have raised one of each, just like so. Now, they don't come from the boat. I just didn't have any extras here, but you get the idea. So that's the undead faction in Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea. Trying to think of how I would best play this. I think I would start with the Crypt and the Necropolis. Get it at least to level 1 and 2 respectively. Level 1 Crypt and level 2 Necropolis. And then go full on Boneyard. Um, because then you could start recruiting for fewer action or re recruiting for fewer resources. Uh, get that Reaper in play and being able to swap the people you kill for people that uh, you have. Also, at level 1, the Reaper says Reaping the Soul only costs their unit strength, not twice the unit strength. So I think that'd be a really, really good place to start strategizing when you play the Undead Faction in Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea. If you attended the live stream today, I really appreciate it. That's twitch.tv slash boardroomgamer. And if you are checking this out on the YouTube edited replay where I try to fix all the mistakes and, and mess-ups and things I don't call the right thing, etc., I appreciate that as well. Please consider giving it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for more of this content. It really, really does help the channel. Once again, I appreciate that. And as always, I'll see you at the next boardroom meeting.